So when you are developing your software to solve data analytics tasks using machine learning, it will be beneficial to learn some software development knowledge, such as the software development life cycle. So software, um, by the name, it is a uh, it is software, right? so, um, uh, so basically software is relatively easy to change, right? relative, right? so it is a feature of software. Um, otherwise it will um, be hardware. Right? So software are uh, easy, relatively easy to change. Right? So therefore, when you writing a piece of software, you should have a plan, you should plan for change. Therefore, it would be good to have comments to describe the meaning of the code. Right? So to facilitate and uh, reduce the cost of maintaining the software. It is also important to write your code in a modular way because modularity can help us manage change. Right? So it can help us to isolate and localize changes. And nowadays, phased development is very common. And uh, it can reduce the cycle time, reduce the life cycle time, and uh, it will deliver the software in pieces and uh, let users to have some functionality while de developing the remaining part of the software. So therefore it is common to have two or more system in parallel. One is the operational or production system in use by the users or customers, right? So this in um, GitHub, this is uh, or in Python, this is called a stable release, right? So you can see the stable release on PyPy. So those are the released versions, right? Production system. And there's also at least another system, which is the development system. This is the development system. And here, this system is developing something to replace the current release, right? So this is uh, what the developers are working on, right? So to build the different versions of releases. And right? so therefore, this is a development system. Right? So this is a very common practice. Now you can see the PySpark, right? They just released another new version 3.1.1 in this month, right? So, and uh, um, it is also common to have uh, this kind of uh, iterative and uh, incremental development. By incremental, it means we will partition a system by functionality. Right? So here is a nice illustration. Then for early release, they can be a very small but functional subsystem. Right? So just for example, illustrate like this. And then for the later release, you can add on functionality. So that is a 
incremental development. Another is iterative development. Right? So the, here, the objective is to improve the overall system in each release, right? For example, we already have all the components, right? So in iterative de development, for example, we may optimize this part first, right? So, and then optimize this part next. So that will give you a iterative development. And there are also Five, uh, four life cycle phases. The first phase is called inception. And so here is where we have the rationales for the project, and we have idea of the scope of the project, and also we have a vision of where this project will go, right? So who are the users and what are the use cases? And then the second phase is called elaboration. Here we design and uh, we have more details, right? So we will have more detailed requirements and uh, also perform some high level analysis and uh, also design of our software. Right? So for example, the assignment question I gave it to you is some kind of detailed requirements, right? So what I want right? so from the assignment. And then the third phase is called construction. I can call it construction where you actually do it, right? So we actually build the software in increments and get them tested and uh, integrated to the whole system. And uh, each of these increments will satisfy a subset of the requirement. And the uh, last, the fourth phase is called transition. And here is where we deploy our software. This will include beta testing, performance tuning, and also user training. So here, the phases, right? Life cycle phases, they are not the same as a classical requirement design, coding, implementation, processes, right? We'll see a picture um, uh, in the next one, right? So, and the phases will also, these phases, right? Will iterate over many cycles. So here is a nice picture showing the different uh, phases and uh, also the iterative part and uh, the incremental development. And so here is the classical traditional workflow, right? So for process workflows, you have a business model, have your requirement and do analysis and design and implement test and de deployment, right? So, and here are the four phases, inception, elaboration, construction, and transition. Right? So, and uh, in, within the phases, right? so there can be iterations. Right? So for example, it can be two iterations, four iterations, or even more iterations. Right? So there will be iterations within the individual phases. Right? So um, this is a quite nice uh, life cycle view right? so of a typical professional software development procedures. So come to your project, right? So I have some advice, right? Some advices. 
first one is um, when you work on a project, right, including your assignment, you should really get a small subset first, right? So get a small subset or get a reduced version of the data to study, right? to study the data, to um, explore it and uh, to develop your code and to debug and also test your code and test your code to see whether it's working properly. And secondly, when you have a big problem, right? A big problem or a difficult problem, right? So what should you do, right? So you need to do, uh, my suggestion is that you should break down, right? you break down your big problem or difficult problem into smaller or easier sub-steps, right? So you can see earlier on the common practice in software engineering where they take iterative and incremental steps. That's what you should also try to take, right? So try to develop your software in an incremental way and also iterative way, right? So, and also please try to avoid black box debugging, right? Black box debugging is that uh, you throw your data in and uh, look at the final result output. And then if you find anything wrong, right? So you, 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 you just uh, try, right? Just try something, hopefully it will work, right? So this usually, this will cause you loss of time. Right? So it's better that you break down your problem into smaller ones so that you can test and you can inspect, right? So as I teach you, you can use print statement. You can inspect and uh, open the box and see what's happening within the, in your software, right? So also be structured, be organized and be logical. This can help you to find the problems um, quicker, right, so quicker. And keep good documentations so that uh, not only you can read it now uh, and you can read it uh, like one year later and also others like me or demonstrator can read your code or your coworkers, right, so will be able to understand your code if you um, are not available or you left. And also, try to get help online, right? So there are lots of resources online, um, typically by doing a search and also for good references, right? You should really keep the references. And uh, sometimes you can you can just put, paste the URL, right? Put paste the link in your code. This right? so can really help you to um, understand uh, sometimes how you get that piece of code written, right? So, um, finally, um, there is another advice or a quote, quote that I like uh, very much is, uh, is from Randy uh, from uh, CMU, right? So he said, engineering is not about perfect solutions, right? So it's not about perfect solutions. It's about doing the best you can with limited resources, right? So it is about doing the best you can with limited resources, right? So therefore, some of you, um, you if you learn, um, you haven't uh, do much in engineering or, or um, uh, the kind of software development, right? So, you you may you tend to have some of your uh, some of you have uh, the the tendency to look for perfect solutions right so you should realize that our resources are always limited right so our computing resources are limited our time is also limited right so therefore um, we just uh, try to learn how we can do our best with these limited resources. Finally, um, the slides um, in this lecture has been um, 
adapted from uh, one major source is uh, MMDS book slide. And also uh, the slides on the software process uh, life cycle is from uh, that, uh, uh, from Lehigh University, uh, Professor Glenn Blank. And uh, um, this chapter in the MMDS book is uh, also on dimensionality reduction, which is uh, um, very useful, right? So if you want to learn further, please study this uh, chapter. So it's uh, free, you can download the PDF. Okay, so that is all for the lecture, um, for all my lectures for this module, right? So next week, Maurizio will take over. In the next video, I will uh, go through the lab briefly.